the bifidobacteria, this important microbe, is, this, is dropping in patients pre and post vaccination. So then I started like asking myself, wait a minute, what's going on here? World renowned microbiome researcher, Dr. Sabine Hassan has published some deeply concerning research on how spike protein affects the gut microbiome. Her research provides precious insight into why many people may experience severe decline in gut health after getting shot with the mRNA. And for many people, this still persists to this day. This is Elia from EO Nutrition. And in today's video, we'll look at exactly what she found and what you can potentially do about that. The bifidobacteria, this important microbe, is, this, is dropping in patients pre and post vaccination. So then I started like asking myself, wait a minute, what's going on here? What we noticed is in four patients that we followed, which were amazing shape, you know, we followed them for um, 90 days. And then next thing you know, um, their bifidobacteria dropped to like zero, from like a million to like zero. So it kept persisting. So there was a persistence in the damage and not only 90 days, but six months, nine months later. So for those who don't know, bifidobacteria is one of the key species of microbes which populate the human gut. They're one of the first to colonize the GI tract of the newborn infant and play central roles in building the immune system and contributing to overall health. Gut dysbiosis featuring low bifidobacteria is associated with a vast array of health problems, ranging from obesity, psychiatric conditions, autoimmunity, and even cancer. You've got your microbiome this way before, and you've got it after, and it's the same patient, and only a certain group of microbes are getting killed, you got to pay attention. Just reference her original findings can be found in this paper published here. And you can see the drastic decline in bifidobacteria in this specific graph. So then, you know, 10, 20, 30, 34 patients later, we're seeing this, you know, killing of the bifidobacteria. Once again, you can also see the results for 34 of the patients here. And the results are laid out in this graph. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it turns out that babies are also affected. These are babies who have not had the jab. They've not been shot with the mRNA, but they are uh, showing low bifidobacteria levels. In fact, some have zero bifidobacteria simply because they've been breastfeeding of mothers who had the shot. As it happens, mRNA was indeed found in breast milk after receiving the shot. And we can speculate that since the body makes spike protein potentially indefinitely in some people after having the shot, then this could be going into the breast milk on an ongoing basis. And then as we were looking at the microbiome of newborns um, to mothers who were breastfeeding, we started noticing that there's no bifidobacteria in those newborns. So we asked ourselves, well, I mean, because newborns are supposed to have a ton of bifidobacteria, right? 90% of the microbiome of babies is bifidobacteria. So we said, well, how come these babies born to moms that are breastfeeding that were vaccinated have zero bifidobacteria? Is the spike protein going to the breast milk into the baby's gut and killing whatever the baby's trying to build? Her team also found striking correlations between bifidobacteria levels and the severity of infection. She believes that bifidobacteria is so essential to help the body protect against inflammation because it essentially sucks it up into the gut from the body, getting rid of all those inflammatory cytokines and carries them into the toilet. Now, at this point, it's important to bear in mind that there is research showing that people who didn't get the shot but just got the viral infection, their microbiome also seems to have changed to some extent. So this depletion of certain microbes, beneficial microbes such as bifidobacteria, may also be applicable for people who have long uh, viral syndrome or post-viral syndrome and who didn't actually get the vaccine. So according to Dr. Hassan, it can be very difficult to replenish bifidobacteria once it's been lost. She's a specialist in this area and focuses on using fecal microbial transplants and claims that they can be very effective in certain people. I've also seen that she's recommended uh, oral probiotics, vitamin D and vitamin C. Now, unfortunately, FMT is not available for most people. Uh, so digging into the research, it, it seems that there are quite a few ways in which someone can try to boost their own bifidobacteria levels. First up, oral probiotics are probably a very good baseline. However, there is some confusion or speculation whether when you take live probiotics, if they even survive the stomach acid or not. 
The idea is they're meant to make their way all the way down into the large intestine, but they have to go all throughout the upper GI tract first, and there's a chance that they'll be degraded. I don't know whether that's necessarily true or not, but it does seem as though there's one potential solution to this that has been known for several years. This is using a different type of probiotic, not technically a live bacteria, but what is called a spore forming probiotic. You may have heard of these. There are several companies who make these at the moment. Uh, Well-known ones are Bacillus coagulans, Bacillus subtilis. And essentially what they do is they remain in this spore form throughout the upper GI system until they get into the colon where they open up and they start kind of proliferating. Now what they do there is they effectively set the stage for other microbes to start growing. So they have been shown to improve the growth and colonization of bifidobacteria, although they're not directly providing bifidobacteria. Secondly, another way is to potentially bypass the upper GI system as a whole and go the back route. This is by using probiotic enemas. Now, there's not that much research on this. However, there have been a couple of interesting reports. There was one report using bifidobacteria in an enema uh, to treat a condition called um, necrotizing enterocolitis. Likewise, lactobacilli has been used um, for ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. Again, with purportedly very good results. Now, I have recommended these in the past to people I've worked with, but in this video, I'm not gonna recommend any recipe or anything like that. You can simply go online, just type in probiotic enema recipe. It gives you uh, ideas how to make it, which uh, probiotics to use what other ingredients to use, and exactly how to do that. Finally, the research also shows that using prebiotic fibers, in other words, uh, undigestible fibers, which can be used um, as a food source to promote the growth of certain microbes in the gut, uh, these can be very useful for promoting the growth of bifidobacteria. Two things which come to mind are inulin and fructooligosaccharides. Um, other types of uh, probiotic fibers. Again, this is not my speciality, but there is a lot of information online about this. Here are a couple of studies which showed a uh, pretty substantial increase in bifido levels. And finally, it's unclear whether consuming uh, fermented foods are going to enhance bifido bacteria or not. It's difficult to say simply because it's difficult to know whether those foods contain bifido bacteria or not. Some people claim that they do, and yet when they're tested, they don't. Certain types of fermented milk products, such as kefir, uh, they've been shown to increase the levels of bifidobacteria, but again, it would be finding the right brand and something that has been substantially tested to make sure that bifido is actually in there. And so, sorry, I can't be more specific on everything. Again, the microbiome isn't really my area of expertise. It's not really my area of research, but I find this fascinating. And this particular piece of information could very much help to explain some of the things that we're seeing among people who receive the shot and are dealing with the long-term consequences of that, they've not been able to regain their digestive health and they're suffering systemic effects because of that right now as we speak. So um, take a look into this information. I highly recommend looking into the work of Dr. Sabine Hassan. It's fascinating. Check out her research and go onto her website. Uh, and if that's everything, that's all for today then folks. I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.